He's got 10 more blues on standby. Why are we swagging 10 balloons? Why are we swagging 10 balloons in speed meta? $30,000 is what the teams are playing for today. This is the group stage. It's the world's warm-up tournament. We are getting very close to the next rounds of the world championship. The next season for the 2024 world championship so very very exciting stuff going on in clash of clans but as we all know we're still in speed meta and the team that was playing out of the clan tribe gaming their second team who is now actually playing out of the team they signed up under buff root riders are once again calling for supercell to buff root riders do boof do, do that is called boof riders do root riders <laughs> do root riders need a buff is that is that what we need guys i think i think that's true i think we need to buff them i don't think they're strong enough right now but it, they didn't put a wall of them anyways you know he's gonna take the, the the weakest troop of the game and he's gonna throw a wall of them and see if he can take down stars base here but he just goes ahead and puts the queen onto one flank the king goes to the other side and then the rest of the force goes right up the gut of the base there making sure to put the queen to the outside the queen does have uh the frozen arrow here a lot of times we've been seeing everybody running the healing puppet with her but obviously giant gone of the king warded with the healing tome rogue champion has the haste file and the hog puppet so he's able to clear out the base there relatively quick and he's got the defenses down for the most part he just need to get back over to the last couple and get the cleanup done but every second that the cleanup is delayed is more potential for navi to do an attack that's faster and we know that root riders can go very very fast However, we know that a lot of attacks that Navi has been using have been going even faster. So that one, clocking in in the mid one minute and thirties. The caster will start Navi off. It looks like he's gonna go with the Lalo and the way that Navi has been doing Lalo, it can be faster. And in fact, it might even be a better way to do Lalo in general because you get so many troops down so rapidly and in so much in a in, in a controlled fashion that it actually ends up being more powerful because you have so much cross tanking from everything being, being hit at the same time. You'll have a heavy of the blues, light of the lava hounds here. Queen will step up. He does go ahead and make her invisible as the king dies forward with the giant garlic. Queen running the healer puppet. That's what I expected in the last one there. But we are seated on this one. We run the life gem. Could run the healing tome. But he will run the hog puppet and the seeking shield. Interesting to see what these pro players have decided to do with their hero equipment. Because we know that Picastro has max level equipment on his road champion. It's all of it max right now. And so if he is deciding to run the Seeky Shield and the Hog Puppet, which is opposite of what we expected to be good when the new World Champion equipment first came out, then it definitely is a telltale sign of maybe we should be looking that direction because he's the one who called the Hog or the Healer Puppet before everybody else did. And so when I see him change equipment, I am definitely keeping an eye out for that. But he will go ahead and get the Royal Champion to go all the way to the model there. He's attacking the left side of the base there all at the same time. The Queen's still moving. The Queen's healers are now spawned. And she will break the wall there and try to get this whole thing further. But I think he's got the defenses under control. He's got 10 more balloons on standby. Why are we swagging 10 balloons? Why are we swagging 10 balloons in speed meta? Come on, B. Castro. Let's go. It's another triple. It's another fast one. But I think that they are slightly behind on time and that is confirmed three seconds behind as the boys over in tribe gaming have the lead four seconds i mean i lied to you so the format of the world championship warm-up is every team will play against every other team in their group twice then at the end of it we will tally up the scores and then the top two teams from each group will advance into the playoffs to play next weekend so i unfortunately will not be around to be able to stream that or cover that because i'm heading out to japan and i guess by the time this video goes live we will already be in japan or maybe it's still today i don't know <laughs> i gotta figure out when i'm releasing these videos because a lot of the content that will be releasing over the next uh, couple weeks so we got some good stuff lined up for you but we will be releasing content that i have all saved up here 
after we've been spoiled the last few weeks here with all the crazy tournaments and the creative tournaments as well. So definitely looking forward to that. But I like the overgrowth being used on this one here. Delays the fire from the Eagle Artillery while he makes the initial approach and some of the initial defenses. And then he ends up having the overgrowth wake up right at the same time that he arrives to the core. That's how we want to use it when we're using it in a spam attack. And with Root Riders being spammed here, obviously that's what they're doing. They're gonna spam Root Riders. They're, they're almost like making a statement to supercell right now like like we're just gonna throw the same attack at every single base and if we win thirty thousand dollars because of that then we maybe prove that the attack is a little bit overpowered and we need to see a, a nerf on it maybe, maybe or maybe they actually do want to buff i don't know maybe they just really like this attack and they just want to be even stronger but this one locking in in a minute and 24 seconds as you can see all of the other wars for the first round of the group stages is going on right now. There will be five wars total that they will play through. And that's, I guess, uh, no wait, six. I lied to you. There will be six rounds total that they will play through. So you just have to play every other team in the group twice. And so we'll see how that plays out here. But it looks like Gaku going to take a page out of Buff Fruit Riders book there and he's breaking out the root riders of valkyries and the super barbarians as well just attacking in at the left side of the base there first got the eagle artillery down relatively fast and will make his way towards the town hall the queen goes to the outside skeleton spells lining the top of the base there around the monolith the defensive king and the defensive grand warden put it in the headers over there and a couple of super barbarians to push the queen inside of the base there it looks like they are easily getting that area of the base there under control good good setup here He's got to get to the back side of the base here. The Road Champion goes to ability relatively early. Running the Hog Pump into the Haze File there. Warden was running the Healing Tome. Queen running the Frozen Arrow on this one. And the King running the Giant Gauntlet. Pop it off right there and surge his way forward. Queen handling the top corner of the base there like a champ. And he's got the right side under control as well. The Road Champion does survive. She does push her way through. The Hog Puppet giving her tanking. He's got the Siege Breaks there. He's got Skeleton Spells. And look at the attack time of this one. We got to check the times on this one as it locks in. Almost exactly the same as Buff Roo Riders, aka Tribe Gaming. And it looks like right now, Navi is three seconds behind. Extrapolate over two attacks is six seconds total. Unfortunately for X Team Early Bird, Homura had a one star. They are in rough waters there against VM Legacy. But let's move into Ari. Ari gonna put the Super Barbarians away. Just going with Pierre Roo Riders and Valkyries. This is very similar to the army that I've been using in legend league and i very rarely miss with it usually if i miss it's my own fault usually because i don't attack the eagle artillery side of the base first and he's gonna he's gonna end on it he's gonna take fire all the way through the base we'll see what he can do with it got a rocket balloon and ice golem set coming out to intercept his main force here the queen goes to the right flank siege Brex goes to the left flank everybody else goes right up the gut of the base and will approach the town hall without it activated there. But the Siege Barracks releasing more Valkyries. If he didn't have the Valkyries already, he has more joining in now. Got the wizard staying protected, but the champion takes heavy, heavy fire on that left flank there. And she gets wrecked. She gets forced to ability right away. Running the Seeking Shield and the, the Royal Gem right there. But this is slowing down. This is slowing down. This is slowing to a crawl. The Rear Riders are slowing to a stop this is a miss he's not gonna make it the artillery doing way too much damage all the way through the base there and guys the only thing that could have saved him here is his super saw is super cell which just buffed those dang root riders they're so underpowered right now they need to they need to do something about these root riders they need to be stronger they need more hp they need to break walls faster they need to do something maybe they need to decrease their uh, troop space there although that probably would hurt them in fact i think a lot of people have been suggesting that maybe if they do like decrease the root rider housing space down to 18 so they can get hit by a spring trap or 19 then they could actually get hit by a spring trap and then they could actually be taken out <laughs> maybe that would actually be a way to nerf them by decreasing their housing space anyways um 81 percent here as ari ends up with the first miss of the war all the root riders grouped up here they all piled up in the core of the base they were all in a stack they were all taking scattershot fire 
They were all taking the town hall blast. They were all taking eagle arf artillery fire together. And when you stack them all up and put them into a pile and make so that they all take the same hits, that is when Root Riders end up failing. They need to spread out there so they can split up the splash damage. And that's also why it's so important that we get the Eagle Artillery down early in the attack there. So I guess it's a defense for Navi. Maybe we'll see them use that base as they continue to make their way forward through the group stages here. Maybe that'll give other teams trouble there. But Gaku with the hold and a big one at that. Now it's time for Stars, who is going to break the mold and go with the Lala. Well, it's not the it's not a break of the mold for him. This is what he likes to use. But it looks like he will just zap out everything around the Eagle Artillery, getting out the defensive Royal Champion, the scatter shot, and the Expo. I I suppose if you need to use uh, what is it? Seven, eight, I guess seven lightning? I don't even know. A lot of lightning to get the defensive Royal Champion down. Then, uh, if you have to use more than would require to get the Queen down, and it will get the Royal Champion down, it's better to just go after the, uh, Royal Champion. You gotta figure out how much life, life the two of them have, and I suppose equipment doesn't really change the amount of life that they have when they're on defense, right? That'd be kind of crazy. If, like, you could put, like, passive equipments and make them be stronger on defense. <laughs> That's not a thing, though, to my knowledge. Uh, however, he does get this. Uh, I love these archers. Like a nice heads up play right there to get the archers to go pick up that air defense that was exposed. The Rogue Champion picks up where the King and the Queen left off there. The Lala will begin in. He doesn't have to rush this. He doesn't have to attack every side of the base there at the same time. He can let the heroes develop, let them get their job done, and then he can put the Lala in. And I don't know. It's debatable whether that is a stronger way to handle it or not. But at least he is guaranteed to make sure that he has time to make sure that the Clan Castle troops are dealt with before he's forced to just set in the next phase there. So we'll slow it down. And because of the miss there out of Tribe Gaming, he has time to work with. But the Rogue Champion. They make your way to the multi inferno. We drop into the Yeti bomb there. Able to secure the town takedown. Got to get the Eagle Artillery down. Eagle Artillery is late to go down here. Saved at the end of the attack there, but that is hitting a smaller pack of balloons up north there. Got to get the defensive world champion down as well. Got her down right now. Or, excuse me, Queen. That was the Queen. He's got the Hog Puppet there for the world champion with the Haste Vial. And that gets her to join the backside there. She survives into the end. He's got the Life Gem, Frozen Arrow, and then, of course, the Giant Gauntlet. And you, you know what's interesting? As we see all of this max equipment from all these players, there's one piece of equipment that we still don't see, and I predicted it, the Fireball. We just do not see the Fireball because when we do have a chance to use it, it is a slow setup. And so maybe, maybe, maybe at some point we'll see it, but not today. There are three wars that are currently in double perfect war territory. We got the Psycho Esports Imperium Titans, Jero Jero versus Agnistars, and Stalwart versus Early Attack. So all of those are still with the potential to go to time. And so that's why we're always conscious of that, but we can slow it down here. We can make sure we get the triples and right now, Buffer Riders needs to make sure this one goes through and then they somehow have to stop Klaus. And that's not an easy task to do, especially when he's not being rushed and forced into attacking as fast as possible and maybe going into something that would be out of his comfort zone. Is anything in Clash of Clans out of Klaus's comfort zone? Maybe a Queen Charge, you know? <laughs> I think that's the only attack that he doesn't use. He does like everything with like hero dives, but he doesn't do queen charges. However, Thomas is gonna get his queen to turn into a queen charge here as he pops the healer puppet. He'll attack the top of the base there with the balloons, with the warder protecting the balloons on the entry of the base there. Also the headhunters, but the headhunters hit a spring trap right there. I saw him get launched off the board, but he still has enough survive to get the defensive world champion down. And he protects the blimp. The blimp drops in a Yeti bomb. Yeti bomb takes the town hall and he frees up the left side of the base there, protecting not only his Blues for the multi inferno, but also the world champion moved to the left side of the base there that was getting hit by the ricochet cannon. But the ricochet cannons are quickly handled when we run the hog puppet. Actually, hog puppet does a fantastic job of keeping the world champion relatively safe. Oh. Well, well, well. This war took quite the turn, didn't it? I was expecting just a non-stop offensive shootout here, but it looks like Navi has the bases to stop the Root Riders and apparently stop the Lalo as well. So ladies and gentlemen, 
It's another miss, and Navi's got him on the ropes as Klaus goes in for the killing blow. So the Japanese teams continue to reign supreme, but Klaus is in. Klaus doing a skelly bat donut. Ooh, baby, look at the value we got out of that. That's what we're talking about, Klaus. He's going to go ahead and uh, go ahead, put it in a lala with that. If I can speak, words are hard right now. Uh, he will get the king to go in and get the defensive row champion down. But getting the clan cast out of the way early is a big time investment, but a way, way, way stronger way to set these attacks up. And I don't know if you can fail after that kind of skelly dota value, right? I, I, I would imagine that you cannot fail after that kind of skelly dota value. But it looks like Klaus will make his way in and get the eagle artillery down. King takes the lead. Got some giants tossed in the mix there as well. King with a giant gauntlet. Doesn't even have a max there. He's got the frozen arrow there on the queen. And he will run the life gem there as he protects the blimp. The blimp will go secure the talent takedown. And it's very similar to what we just saw out of buff root riders. And so we, we, we definitely are seeing a better execution of Lalo here than the last one. And that's largely because of the value that the heroes get. But the, the Skelly Dota definitely sets it up there strong. We got the Hog Puppet and the Haste File. And we're seeing a lot of these pro players skipping the Royal Gem and pushing for the Haste File with the Hog Puppet lately. Because the Hog Puppet, you think that they work better together here because it does give you the protection against things like the Ricochet Cannons. But he'll go in and freeze up the back end defense. This doesn't even bother with the air defense. Just goes in to protect the... Royal Champion to keep the Expo and the Rickshaw Cannon off of her for just, for just a moment there. But the Bloons in the backside there will go ahead and get the air defense down. And it looks like he's got the Royal Champion surviving to the end. He got through the defenses. Not going to be a problem here. It's a triple. It's a win. Navi gets 15 stars. Navi will chase down a quarter Tesla here as they will now have one win on their belt. But they have to play through five more wars of the group stages. And so we'll see how they stand at the end. But being as they played last year's World Championship and they were the, one of the automatic invitees into this stage of the tournament, we would expect them to go far. And today they deliver. Final scores are rolling in, but we can declare victors for most of the rounds. Tribe Gaming takes the win. The Legacy takes first round. Agnistars takes it on time. A very, very big time advantage for them. Psycho Esports able to get the perfect war against Imperium Titans. We're still waiting on Stalwart Esports. We're waiting for that one to log right there. But we see that Synchronic dominates on defense against Alex Seed. Navi dominates on defense against Buff Root Riders. And VA Esports is Navi's next opponent. They were able to get the perfect war against MO Shifters. However, we look at the average attack time for VA Esports. And we can see that they have a one minute and, or excuse me, 106 second average attack time. And there we go. There's the final score there from Salvador Sports. And it is a two second win. Two seconds. Split there between Stalwart Esports and Early Attacks. Oh my god, look at the attack times of Stalwart Esports and Early Attacks there compared to every other team. Stalwart Esports is our current defending world champion. And they locked in an average attack time of 1 minute and 32.2 seconds. Very, very fast. It is the fastest on the board right now, other than Tribe Gaming, who locked in exactly 1 minute and 30 seconds on average attack time. So that's the competition that the teams are facing today. And even though Navi slowed down towards the end because they were able to take their time after we saw the misses, we need to see them move faster than they are today. And wait, VM Legacy hit at 85? Am I missing that? Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. VM Legacy was even faster. Thank you, chat. Thank you, Twitch chat. VM Legacy, 85 seconds, a minute and 25 on their average was even faster than those guys. So, yeah, there's some serious competition out there. And I guess we'll see how it all plays out.